Good morning and welcome to What Shape Are You In? Um, so I've been, this is my third of a series and I've been doing, uh, trying this out of doing uh, a series of, of uh, morning talks on a, uh, on, on one topic or idea and the idea that we're exploring is culture. What is it? Uh, and and uh, I bet if you ask somebody that, they would come up with all different kinds of names. So we're going to uh, pull this cotton ball apart, so to speak. And we're using metaphor. Uh, the, first, uh, ser the first talk was on culture as a fishbowl. And then the second talk was culture as a dollhouse. And today I want to talk about culture as oatmeal. <laughs> you know, if you can't take these abstract ideas and discover them in your everyday mind, they're not worth anything. You have to be able to discover these truths or these principles uh, in everyday mind. Uh, and that's what Zen is, basically. Zen, uh, the masters ask, what is enlightenment? And the Zen master says, your everyday mind. So you have to find your enlightenment or your insights in your everyday mind. So let's look at oatmeal. <laughs> I love this because um, I live a very boring life. I, I live here in Blackstone, the center of the world. Uh, but then you two are the center. But I have to work with what I've got. So this morning I have oatmeal. Uh, my, my, my wife uh, uh, is a creative oatmeal maker. We eat a lot of oatmeal. And it's always different. She flavors it with, puts different stuff in, you know. And so this morning, uh, I was eating the, I call it porridge. I was eating my porridge. <laughs> and it tasted very good. And she asked, can you pick out the flavors? And I said, and then I, I couldn't. I, but then I said, oh, uh, prunes. She said, no, figs and black walnuts. <gasps> and then I watched the tastes separate from this original taste, so to speak, into, oh, there I could distinguish. Oh, there's the walnut taste, and mm, ah, there's the fig taste. I could distinguish fig and walnut. But what was fig and walnut? It was a name. It was a known. I know f uh, figs from my, you know, if you've ever had a fig, you would know figs. It would be a name in your cultural storehouse and if you come upon the taste you would what is that taste figs and you would come up and now you would taste the word fig <laughs> you would taste the known you would taste your the memory of it so i was actually kind of watching this and it was very interesting uh, because once you once i tasted the fig and the walnut i couldn't untaste it i couldn't go back to the original porridge which was good, and it was full of flavors, but none of them were distinguished, you see. And maybe that's a good cook would, uh, uh, having watched Anthony Bourdain, you know, I mean, that, <laughs> you know, a good meal is where all the flavors are balanced, and maybe you can't really pick out any one, but it's just great, you see. So it was really good oatmeal. So I'm just kind of like using this as an example in our everyday mind, because everybody has this kind of experience to, as a metaphor, to understand the culture of the known. So we're going to look at the culture of the known today. So what is the known but the names and forms that are in our cultural storehouse that have been given to us by our mother? Mother is the first giver of names and forms. The baby says, what is that? And she says, it's oatmeal. And then, oh, that's a fig. Oh, and that's walnut. And I put that in there. So it's culture. And it begins at the ground with the child pointing out things and the mother telling it what it is until you leave the home. And then you point to that with the father. What is that? And he says, that's your boss. <laughs> yes. So the storehouse of culture of, na of the known. So I do a little cartoon. It's a butcher, and you've got the uh, the unknown, the uh, uh, 
chopping up figs and walnuts. And then, of course, once you chop something, once you chop something up in the known, each piece has its own story. So, using my example of the oatmeal, if I, once I get with the fig taste. I could have started a conversation about figs. Usually that's, oh, I remember when we used to have, we have a fig tree, yes. And oh, and this year, hope to have good figs. And that, oh, we got that fig tree from Greece. There's a, a, a woman here, a Greek lady here in Black, this is true, a Greek lady here in Blackstone who brought some fig trees from Sparta and planted them. And I got one of the sprouts and now I have two fig trees from Sparta and I could go on and on and on exploring the known about figs, my personal experience with figs, and I could become an expert on figs and get a PhD in figs. I could spend my whole life on that one taste and become a, uh, uh, and just to keep exploring it, you see, but it would all be within culture. I would never get back to that original porridge you see. So culture chops up the original porridge, which is basically where we are when we start out as infants, before we name everything. And so this is like the bucket of what the butcher gets from. He draws things from, and you could say, now I study Eckhart Tolle. I put a lot of posts on, on uh, Eckhart Tolle posts. And uh, Eckhart Tolle talks about the now. And all the teach all the uh, spiritual talk about presence, be present, the now. Uh, what what does that mean? It means well, there are different ways of looking at it. Uh, non-dual is presence. You see, the porridge was non-dual. As soon as I said fig and walnut, now it's dual. As soon as I say fig, it's dual because now I've got fig coming out of porridge. And that's two. Fig, porridge. Fig taste, porridge. You see? Once I discriminate, pick out something out of the all, I create two. I create the thing I look at, the taste I feel, sense, the study, you see, and the porridge out of which it came. That's two. So if you expand that, you see, carrying it to its extension, you've got the porridge is a metaphor for the all before it's named. The all out of which everything comes. But you can't see the all because if you see it, then it's a thing. So the all is transcendent of the things. You see that? The all, speaking of the all of creation, is transcendent of all of the names and forms of creation, which is culture. So the all is prior to the known. So the all is unknown. So the porridge then is a metaphor for the unknown, out of which I select the tastes and name the tastes, walnuts and figs. It's two things, you see. So the all, the unknown, the, that's non-dual. You see, non-dual means before dual, before you name anything. So the all, the presence, and you could even say that's God, you see, but the problem with God is now it's a thing. So we have, can't even use God anymore because it's been selected out as a thing. That's not the all. The all would be beyond God. That's why in Buddhism, in Zen, is if you see the Buddha, kill him. Which means, if you see the Buddha as a thing, that's not the Buddha. Or if you see God as a th that's not God, that's a false thing, you see. A name out of culture. Names and forms come out of culture. You go to uh, France, you got different names for everything, you see. So the language names the form. So culture is language. Culture is semantic, and language is thinking. And so I was able to watch this morning as I ate the porridge. It was very interesting. There was just the presence or the taste of porridge, and then there was the mind selecting, this, discriminating against the tastes. 
No, there's the fig, there's the walnut, you see. Now I've got these selected things. And there's the name, fig and walnut. My personal experience with it, the cultural experience with it, you see. All of that comes with culture. And once you take, this is another example here. I'll show this off and on, but uh, uh, what am I? This is the, uh, the old hag and the princess, you see. I won't dwell on this right now, but you probably will see the old hag. Well, there's a princess there. But there are two pictures here. And before you see it, it's just an ink blot. That's the porridge. But once you see the princess, that's the fig. Once you see the old hag, that's the walnut. Then you can't not see it. Once you see the hag, you can't unsee the hag. And of course, if I say there's a princess there, you'll look and look and look and say, where's the princess? I can't see it. Now you've got attention. Now you got a puzzle. Oh, I got to see it. And you'll strain and strain and strain. And finally you give up. Oh, I quit. And then, bam, there it is. Anyway. So I just thought this was interesting. So we're just exploring culture. And today's cotton ball is that culture is the known. And that culture chops up everything into fragments. The broken bread. Of course, this is why. Christianity and the Mass is the ritual of restoring the bread. In other words, you break the bread up, culture breaks the bread up into pieces, and then you eat all, then you eat the broken body of culture, and it becomes one in you. So now you become, through the eating of culture presence, you become the all. You become the non-dual. But at the same time, you're still eating figs and walnuts and liking one or the other, or none, you see. So once culture chops something up, it becomes valuable. It's going to be good or bad. I love figs. I hate walnuts. And then I want to give other people, have some figs. Oh, don't have any walnuts. They're bad. But I have figs, you see. Now I become a preacher, <laughs> an evangelical for the religion of figs, you see. I want to spread figs around the world. They're good for everybody. Walnuts, nah, no, nah, don't have any of them. Nuts, oh, cut your hands, bad, bad, bad. You see? So culture divides up everything into values. And there you go. But everybody is the one, the butcher, so the butcher decides what's good and bad. The butcher is the one, the judger, who decides what's good and bad, and he wants to tell everybody else what's to eat, because he's the one. So anyway, we'll stop with that. Meditate on that today, next time you eat some oatmeal. <laughs> See if you can notice events, times in your life when you just see the whole and somebody comes along and starts pointing out what you should, should see, what you should feel. The names and forms, the judgments, the discrimination, the butcher's knife, the fragmentation of the one, which is the presence, the ah, I'm okay, ah, I'm okay. Presence, the now, the all, non-dual. I'm not divided unless somebody says, hey, you, come here. Bam. I'm divided. I'm abstracted out of the all into me. What do you want? <laughs> I'm at a movie. I'm in the movie. I'm the all of the movie. And somebody, hey, you got some popcorn? Will you leave me alone? I'm in the movie. It's everywhere. Thanks for dropping in. I'll see you next time.